Happy New Year, EDCI and Electroline. It's Happy Tori. And Dakota. <laughs> Yay, finally, 2021. It is here. It has begun. Long anticipated. Yes, not a whole lot has changed, but we are optimistic that the good is upon us. <laughs> right? 2021 is hopeful. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, I mean, this episode, we're just going to chat, have a little bit of fun, recap the year, and um, I don't know, just provide you guys with a smile. So how was your Christmas, Dakota? Um, as about as Christmas as it could be. A um, little bit of visiting, smaller groups and such, but uh, I was glad to be over with it. The kids were happy <laughs> and I was exhausted, which is... Were you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, um, my dad got COVID two days before Christmas, and we've been around my family for some time. So we all got tested. We were all negative, but we uh, did decide to quarantine for those 10 days or whatever. So mm. we had a very intimate Christmas and New Year's right here at our house, which was, it was nice because um, my kids are a little becoming a little bit older that the excitement with presents and stuff actually means something. So mm. it was nice, just very intimate, I'll say. And also if anybody has to get the COVID test, it is not bad at all. I actually did it twice. Swamper. Yeah, I did it twice because I wanted, um, there's like a rapid test that you can do in Oshkosh and that was booked. So I went to the, the T-Rats, um, they have a testing center. Mm -hmm. And the first time, yeah, they just like put it maybe like up to here and they like, you have to turn, I had to do it myself. So you turn it 10 times on each nostril and my eyes watered, but it wasn't, I don't get how people are like in excruciating pain with that. I don't know. It's not that bad. So yeah. Did you ever see those, uh, the guy, guy on the, I don't know, in the nineties, you know, in the nineties, there was always like. I don't know, every month there was like a, a magic show on like ABC or whatever. <laughs> like they'd have like different people come in and do the same tricks over and over again. And it was always like made for TV magic. So a lot of it was camera trickery. There was one guy who would like, um, he would like, I don't know, put needles through his arm or he, like one of his tricks was he would take a drill and put it in his face what? Or, or, or pound a nail, but it was always into his nose. Okay. Well, you're nasal cavity actually goes a, a back really far. And so when I was a kid, I wanted to see how it did it. So I, I took a paintbrush, which is a thin, you know, hard piece of thing. And <laughs> saw how far I could push it. And you can get like two, two and a half inches in there. Stop so, then, it. so then that became a trick that I would do for my friends is, you know, <laughs> take like a long slender object and be able to insert it into my nose like that. Oh my gosh. I've done it in like, you no. Know, 20, 15 years or so, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not anything special. It's just, so yeah, the idea of, oh, you went into your nose a half inch to do a swab. Come on now. Yeah. Get on my level. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Well, I feel like one of these times you have to do that magic trick for everybody. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I can figure it. I can find something to shove in my face. Oh my God. Okay. That's kind of making my nose like it. <laughs> you know the bit. feeling. It's like your yeah. eyes water, like, oh, but yeah, it's. As long as nobody like bends it while you're in there, that always gives me the shivers. But were your parents like watching you do this or letting you just watch these magic shows and trying to reenact and they were okay with that? Eh, they were enablers. <laughs> they they didn't squash my creativity or <laughs> sense of adventure. So Okay, well you'd be totally fine with that little schwab. Yeah. All right, Dakota. I, I mean I don't know where to start. What should we start with, really? Um hey, wait, I actually do have a question about sure. Christmas. Um, did you get anything fun or what'd you get your kids? What did Santa bring your kids? Oh boy. The kids got a lot of stuff, but insert branded toy here that they're this flavor of the month. They got all those. Like what are they into? My son Abram's into transformers right now. Oh. Um, so he's just got a ton of those. Actually any, any thing that changes from like a vehicle into doesn't have to be transformers brand. He likes the uh, super wings. Yeah. Yep. The Transformers are a big one. Yeah, so he's into that. And Arya is um, all princesses, all Barbies, all pink, all purple, Aww. all that stuff. So they got a whole load of that stuff. 
Yeah, so cute. Now I'm trying to think of what my kids got. It's sometimes it's just like a blur. We didn't realize how much we actually did get. Like we planned on only getting them like five to 10, you know, gifts. Mm -hmm. But then we kind of started getting stuff in November and just put it away in the closet. And then as we were, yes. And as we were wrapping, it was like, okay, this is a little bit out of control, but it's kind of just all like little toys. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm always trying to recreate the, uh, uh, the, what I remember of being a kid and just mountains of presents that were as big as I am. <laughs> yeah. And so like when we had like nine, 10 presents, I'm like, I think they need more. And maybe he's like, I think they're fine. They're two and four. Oh, uh, you're a good dad. Yeah. I, just, I like buying stuff too. So that doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> you're a shopper. Well, I got, I loved, um, my husband got me bees. It's like with my children's names. Oh, that's them. cool. Yeah. yeah. I haven't taken them off since. I love that. And you can't really see, but like right here, uh, my mother-in-law got us, it's like a step stool for the kids to be oh, counter height. Yeah. So, cause they love cooking with me or at least trying to cook with me. So I love it. That's like one of my favorite things. It's wood. They the can't kitchen help her. Yeah. They yeah. can't fall over. Cause there's a um, compart or a little wood there. Yeah. Like a railing around the top. Yeah, yeah, we had one of those for a while. Uh, Mindy got one off garage sale for like five, ten bucks. Oh, it was like pink, cool. but she just yeah. painted it white. And we had it, I think she got rid of it just a couple of months ago. Because uh, we have bar stools up by the kitchen now, so the kids can sit down there and kind of lean over and help and stuff like that. But um, yeah, they loved it. They both yeah. stand up there and then cook with her. It was great. Yeah. And she wound up buying it for, like I said, five or ten dollars in garage sale, and she wound up selling it for five or ten dollars in garage sale. So we just used it and passed it on. So yeah, those are great. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I've wanted one for so long and it's just one of those things I just never purchased. Like I'd always just put, push a chair up against our counter, but I love it. So those are two things that I specifically got that I loved. Were you good this year? Did you get anything? I'm trying to think. Um, I know it seems like forever ago. Well, like I said, me, I think I said last time, Mindy and I really don't get each other gifts for Christmas. We usually get something for us or the house i can't remember yeah. what that well that was like was kind of the bathroom this year because she really wanted to redo our bathroom um and i'm like well i could probably squeeze it in in december so we wound up getting that done so that was nice oh uh, that's three remodel projects i did in 2020 it's been a very productive year what the heck that's awesome good for you but then uh she got me a um uh cookbook a meat eater cookbook the meat eater is like a show that i'm obsessed with um basically to sum it up it's a dude who's who hunts and did various animals across the world and kind of goes through the process of you know here's how you track them here's how you kill them here's how you butcher them here's how you prepare them it's not just the kill shot porn that you get on a lot of like sportsman shows it's more uh kind of the whole spectrum you know being a good conservative or conservationist environmentalist and also hunting for food so anyway he has a cookbook out of various recipes for different types of game and stuff and um that was really cool it's got a lot of pictures in it. it's very it's very nice just to kind of have out and the kids like looking at it too so. <laughs> but is it wild game where you're gonna yeah. have to go out and catch like a wild pheasant and then cook some sort of like pheasant yep. leg yeah really all that stuff yeah that's the plan yeah i mean it's you know like they have like the big game recipes so it's like it's applicable to like you know antelope sure. deer elk you know that kind of stuff and then they have like the bird recipes which are here you know pheasant turkey goose all that stuff so oh, cool. um, I'm, I'm probably not gonna have opportunity to hunt most of the things that those recipes would call for but there's a lot of stuff in there i could use so, so did neat. you uh, get anything for hunting this year oh uh, yeah i got a i got a seven pointer uh, when I was hunting, Ooh. so that was nice. It was opening day. I was cold. I was bored. I was kicking myself, asking why I do this every year. <laughs> and then I got up and started walking around, and uh, yeah, I got my book right away. So that was nice. Oh, awesome! Cool. What do you do with the meat? I process it all myself. So um, usually, uh, I'll take the next day and I'll just sit in the garage and piece it out and pack it up. And then when I get home, I'll clean it up and put it in the freezer. I awesome. got a grinder here, so I grind it up too. So Seriously? My kids, my Good kids, for you. My kids love venison. 
yeah. love Vanessa. And so, yeah, they were happy. Oh. I was happy that dad caught a deer. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Congrats. Good for yeah, you. Thanks. I love, I've tried venison steak before and it was amazing. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be hit or miss depending on how it's prepared and not, I mean, by cooking, I mean, how the meat is handled. So yeah. there's a, there's a lot of ways to screw it up. <laughs> so like if you, there's a, I don't know, there's a couple of glands on the deer or if you don't clean it right, or you don't clean your tools right. Like you can get that nasty kind of gamey taste in there that people don't yeah. like. I mean, there's still yeah. some of that there and it's part of the meat, but it's, it, it, when it's, when it's prepared well, handled well, it's really good when it's not taken care of and you get hair in the meat and you get those tarsal glands Ew, all wow. over the place, then it just, it stinks and, and tastes bad. So you must've had good stuff. I had good stuff. Don't ruin it for me. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> so any hoots. Well, cool. Good job. Congrats. I guess um, we don't have any company updates this month, but let's just give a big, huge Congrats, applaud to Molly Grow, who yeah, is Molly. retiring April 1st. I find that very odd that her last day is April Fool's Day. So I don't know if there's like trickery behind that, but we'll I think out. we got to give her a little shout out because I, I don't remember how many years, but it's well over 30 years that she has worked at EDCI and Electroline and single-handedly grew um, the wire uh, part of Electroline. So I think she deserves as Absolutely. much applause as we can give her. Molly's just good people too. So she good for her. Good people. Totally. And I hope she can live out retirement and do the things she wants. Hopefully, you know, COVID will abate. Yes. And she can travel and do stuff with her family and all that jazz. So let's do a little recap. Um, Dakota, I have, I wrote down some of 2020's big events and a few of them we might have forgot because obviously with COVID um, and we're a whole year past, mm -hmm. but I just want to bring up some 2020 events that have happened. Let's see if we can remember some of them. All right. The Australian bushfires. 47 million acres were burned. Oh, wow. You remember that? I think it was at the that beginning of last year. Pretty much all of Australia is gone. Yes. And I just remember seeing a ton of pictures of like firemen carrying out baby or like koalas and stuff. And it was just so heart wrenching. That's 47 awful. million acres. <laughs> I can't even fathom that. Is this, um, is this first item on your list just kind of a a harbinger of things to come on the rest of this list. <laughs> How terrible um, was 2020? Actually, now that I'm looking at these, I don't think there's any good ones on here. Mm -hmm. There's one. There's one on here that I, that maybe is, I don't know if it's uplifting, but just, um, I'll leave it towards the end because maybe it'll give us high spirits. Sure, but, palate cleanser. Um, yeah, there we go. I don't know if you're into like the British royal family, but Prince Harry and Meghan Markle quit the royal family. But you've known that, right? I think they I moved mean, to Canada. I heard about it. I'm good for them if that's yeah. their move. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I actually don't follow them, and I don't follow the royal family at all. Just never have. But it's something um, that was big in the news. Mm -hmm. um, Kobe Bryant the death of Kobe and his daughter, Gigi. That was really hard. Um, that was unfortunate. Yeah. My husband especially it took that to heart because he's a big Kobe fan. So a few tears were shed over at the Klein household, but that's really, uh, that's sad for the basketball world. Parasite. Have you seen the movie? Parasite, no. It swept the but, Oscars. Yeah, that's right. No, I, I had been meaning to watch it. Um, yeah, I didn't get around to it. I haven't seen it either. And I tried to like Google what it was about. But whatever review I was reading, it just was like, nonsensical or yeah, it, I don't know. I think they just have a lot better vocabulary than I did, because I couldn't understand a single word that they were saying. So I was just like, you know what, I'll either watch it or I won't. I think it's um, it's all in a different language too. Like I think there's I think subtitles. It's Korean. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna add that. I have a. I keep a 
note thing on my phone when people mention movies that I are meaning to watch and I always add I gotta make sure I add this one yeah maybe we should both watch it and then we can give a little review I'm down yeah okay yeah. let's do it that was one of the things I wanted to ask you like I don't even know what kind of shows you watch like what it would be nice if we watched a similar series or a movie and we could do a review because I think people would enjoy that and maybe some people watch the same things too but personally my my go-to is real housewives and i have a feeling that you're not a bravo fan <laughs> nah, not gonna can't, you're not gonna jump on that train <laughs> no sorry can't follow you down that path but i have i have amazon prime and uh, well we have cable and mm. then um we do have apple tv we just how's it. that how's their original programming on apple tv i've seen some some stuff on there i was kind of interested in but I, don't, I haven't really pulled the trigger on that when I've got so many other services. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't gotten into any like original series because I, I just haven't. Most of the shows that I watch on Apple TV are stuff I probably still watch on cable. It's just that you can stream them right, right. through Apple Convenient. TV. So, and um, I've been trying to catch up on some Prime shows that I kind of started. So, but we got it, I think, because I got the new phone, I got the Apple TV free. So oh, nice. we're trying to find options to cancel cable because that bill just keeps getting higher and higher. But there's a few programs on there that I really enjoy that it's hard to find streaming services for. That makes sense with the price. So yeah, and I've, I've tried most of them. And I have a lot of active subscriptions. I, yeah, I've, I haven't had cable TV since, you know, in years. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think the best option I, I, I had was uh, YouTube TV was great because they had yeah. a lot of the, the core channels and stuff. But I mean, their prices are like 70 bucks yeah. now. So it's like, I don't watch TV. I don't really don't watch TV that often. And when I do, it, it's for, for very specific shows and it's usually streaming shows and stuff like that. So totally. yeah, um, I guess. So Real High Housewives is your thing right now? <laughs> yeah. And I DVR everything because usually about the time it starts is when we're putting the kids down. So I watch all the Real Housewives and then I watch on TLC a 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> I'm really into terrible reality TV shows. Those are probably my two main. I used to watch Food Network all the time. Um, I don't do that anymore. When I was down in yeah. uh, Missouri, I got really big into HGTV. That's probably the last time I watched yeah. like quote reality shows, but just watching people buy houses or watch people flip houses. I was, I don't know what it was. I was just into that for a while, but these days it's really like uh, very particular shows. And, and Mindy and I are usually cycling just a couple at a time. Our, our thing is we usually have like a heavy show and like a feel good show yeah, or, or maybe one or two of each. Um, and then I might have a show I watch on my own, but I, I, I might, if I sit down and watch TV more than once a week, it's, that's a lot. But lately it's been um, Ozark on Netflix. Mm -hmm. That show is incredible. Very dark, but incredible. Yes. I watched this series. Yeah. Very is good. Season two out? It's season four is coming out soon. Oh wait, the Ozarks, maybe not. It's a Netflix series, Jason Bateman. Uh, yeah, no, I totally it, watched that. It's really good. So we we just watched a couple episodes. We just finished season one of that last night. So we're way behind on it, but we're taking our time as we usually do. Okay, I think I watched that all during my like month of Netflix free. <laughs> when we downloaded it, yes, loved that. Yeah, that was a good show. Um, we watched uh, on HBO uh, the new Perry Mason was incredible mm. well worth it okay um i had only been familiar with the old perry mason from okay. you know and hunting season like i have an uncle who just all he watches is me tv throughout the year and so when we're up and hunting he's just always watching me tv so perry mason's <laughs> on and i'm like i know perry mason we watched that new show that new series and wow that was really good too um and then our feel good show at the moment we have um uh just started the history of swear words i think is what it's called what? On, on Netflix, which is wonderful. Well done. A documentary? Um, yeah, kind of a documentary with a commentary from like comedians and, and folks. And it's hosted by Nicolas Cage, 
which okay. is just funny that <laughs> yeah. he is hosting that. Yeah, History of Swords. I think it's just just came on Netflix recently. So we just started watching that and it's good. It's really good. And then um, every once in a while, if we might dip our toes in some great British baking show. Yeah. <laughs> just, I've seen this, some of those. Just, yeah, it, I was curious about it. And then like Avery Wood couldn't sleep one night and I didn't want to watch one of my shows with him in the room. And I figured that would lull him to sleep. And then I'm like, man, that's, that's actually, <laughs> it's actually a charming show. I, <laughs> See, you do have a British tie to you. Do I? Yeah, watching the shows. Get more involved with the family now. I heard that. So you're a big Netflix guy then. Yeah, pretty much anything uh, streaming. Okay, so. Yeah, Netflix is big. So uh, one of my 2020 events on this list was during quarantine, everybody was watching. Ozarks was one of them. Mm -hmm. Love is Blind. You probably didn't watch that, did you? I didn't watch that. That was one of the top ones. And then Tiger King. Tiger King, yeah, we watched that one. Oh my gosh, I I did too. That was like right when quarantine or lockdown, whatever you want to call this, started. Yeah. And everybody was talking Tiger King. Yeah, that was I, good, I held though. off. I held off for a long time on that. I'm like, I'm not watching this show. Like, come on. And then I, I watched it and I couldn't get enough. It's like, this is ridiculous. Isn't it crazy to think that that's real or they're not characters? Because it yeah. just, it blows your mind. Just how people live, really. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It definitely made me want to take a shower a couple of times. <laughs> If you haven't seen Tiger King, just watch it. I, I don't remember. It's not even that long. No, like, it's not. It's it's just episodes of like six, five or yeah. six episodes. It's but it's it's just like one of those blow your mind, like I can't believe this is a this is true. This is a thing that happened. <laughs> yes. Okay, well I think for next month, let's watch Parasite and let's do a little recap. Okay. I will put it on my list. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, 2020 event, Harvey Weinstein verdict, which started the Me Too movement. Um, I don't know if you remember from that, obviously he is just not a good person, very high up in Hollywood and in movies and entertainment and, um, was charged with, I think, rape and sexual assault of many women. And I just feel like from the photos of before and then after he was acquitted, he aged like 30 years. Seriously. Weeks, like, whoa. What happened there? So I don't know, but he is in prison, I think. Um, yeah. So that happened in 2020. And then obviously some other thing, we don't have to get too deep. I didn't put any, um, political stuff on here either but oh, obviously good. Good. that that political all played things out. happened yes right but like um other protests and other movements happened as well during this time which is great um in the sense and uh, i guess let's just move on murder hornets arrived in the u.s yeah murder hornets they, i mean they seemed like a big threat and then people stopped talking about them so i don't know if we lost the murder hornets <laughs> Where are they, they at? To Canada. I don't. It'd be I nice to they, find out where they're at. Yeah, I feel like we couldn't miss them because weren't they like two inches? They were bigger than that. I thought yeah. they were like huge. Let's look up murder hornets size. Yeah, I, I, I look. I thought on average they're about two inches. They arrived in Washington State, and they can wipe out an entire bee colony within hours. Apparently, yeah, so right. a very invasive species, an Asian giant hornet that arrived in the u.s somehow but we're not sure where they're at so <laughs> keep your eyes open <laughs> somebody's got to get on the, the murder hornet task force and, and find those hornets because they can't just be left unattended no oh my god are those also the same bees did you hear about the bees like if one of them stings you then the other ones smell like the pheromones and they'll like just attack whatever the other one stung. Have you heard about that? I thought that was just a thing in bees in general. Like, oh, really? They give off death pheromones. Yeah. So like they, they smell one died and they go and I, I just assumed that was the case. I've not, I'm not up on my, my bee trivia. Yeah. Honestly, but. 
Yeah, yeah I don't know if that was that. I, I, th- I feel like I've heard of that well before the murder hornets um, came to visit. Yeah, yeah. Bees, I tell you. Um, and then we have other terrible news. Alec Trebek more recently died, oh. the host of Jeopardy. Yeah. Um, the guy is just a, he was just a, just a nice, nice dude. Just a humble, nice dude. I listened to a, a podcast with him on it and just him talking about his kind of journey. And um, just seems like, I don't know, he's like trying to be handy around the house and stuff. Like he's not, yeah. he's just a dude. He's just a guy. But yeah. uh, I, I, I felt warm towards him. So it's, it's sad to see him go. Totally. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. I think this week or next week Aaron Rodgers is set to host. Yeah. Um, but they have a whole slew of people that are testing that out. But obviously nobody can replace Alex. Yeah. But we'll see. I think that it's I have down thirty six years he was on that show. Oh wow. I think. So that's insane. Um yeah yeah that's about all that i have on here i also have that trump claimed to ban tiktok and we still got tiktok up so that was one political piece i have on there but um i'm I'm not i'm I'm not a tiktoker so i can't i'm a tiktoker i'm just a tiktok watcher Uh, you consume you consume the tiktok yeah it's just funny i just like the feel good stuff so that was 2020 in a nutshell the craziness obviously ton more happened um in a, in the world and in the u.s but there we go that's a little recap of 2020 so here's to 2021 i got some coffee do you have anything I got some coffee mm-hmm. oh it's needed um so do you have any new year's resolutions dakota uh, I like to lie to myself and tell myself that I don't set New Year's resolutions, um, but I kind of do. I kind of yeah. set small goals for myself, but I but I continue to do that throughout the year. Like every month or two, I, I update the goal and just kind of maintain it. So I'm pretty much just carrying through goals from last year into this year. And that, right. you know, <laughs> obviously on that whole get fit journey, trying to, I mean, small achievable goals so that you can hit them feel good and then up the ante next time and just keep rolling it and that's that's kind of been my thing i've been working on for probably like the last five years or so so more of that yeah good for you and uh, honestly that's the way to do it you guys if you want to set goals set little ones because they're more likely to be achieved Mm -hmm. and just keep building you up so let's just keep with it i personally um i kind of set I also too, I'm not a huge, huge resolution person, but I try to think in my head, what can I achieve this year? And this year I want to start to budget. Mm. I am not, I have never, I mean, I have started spreadsheets and downloaded PDFs (laughs) for years, but I would love to budget myself and budget my family because obviously we have a growing family. We own a home. Mm. Um, stuff like that. So I would love to uh, dig deeper into finances and savings. And I would love to start doing that. So I'm going to try to push myself to do that. Um, I also want to get more into reading. I, before bed, I'm, I scroll on my phone and it just dawned on me like a couple weeks ago, I was scrolling on my phone and my eyes started to hurt. And I feel like that's that blue light, you know, before going to bed. It's just not good for you. So I thought, I don't personally hate reading. I just never do it because I have my phone. So maybe I want to buy a Kindle. I thought that might mm-hmm. be good. I think um, Bobby, my husband, has like a year of, is it Audible or somewhere where you can like download books every so often? So I would just love to get Audible. into reading. Yeah, Audible's the... Um the audiobooks, but I know Kindle oh, Unlimited, they have like, you can get a subscription, you get access to a certain amount of books. But yeah, that's funny you say that is because actually just before Christmas, and we called it a Christmas present, but um, I bought Mindy and I uh, Kindle paper whites with the backlight. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just looking at those last night. <laughs> They're like 80 bucks. Yeah. And because um, I read all the time, 
I know usually my, my thing is I'll read, I'll go to bed and I'll read until I get tired and I put my phone yeah. down and go to sleep. But then like my phone's always in my face and super bright. And yeah. And then, uh, so we got those paper whites and I just turned the, the brightness all the way down to like one, which in the day is like, you can't see it, but at night it's just bright enough to, to manage. And so, yeah, my Kindle just actually, we have a king size bed, so it actually sits on the bed next to my pillow and I lay down and I open it up and I'm on my side reading and I just drop it and fall asleep. And yeah, I, I try to, I try to read ideally at least a, at least a book a month, um, if not more. But yeah, I've been, uh, I'm currently reading the Neuromancer trilogy. It's an older series, but I've been, I've been, I've been reading, I've been meaning to get around to, I always try to read like some of those books you hear about, but you've never gotten around to reading like um a couple years ago it was you know brave new world um dune yeah. um 1984 and neuromancer yeah. was on my list and then it's like i need to finally get around to reading so actually it was good i just finished that one i think a week week ago and then i started the second in the in the set so yeah oh. uh, highly recommended definitely okay um, my big thing is like if i have my phone if i'm trying to read like i i'm gonna get distracted by other stuff very easily if i get a notification yeah. i'm going to switch apps and I, I want a dedicated device that's just for reading because i could either spend an hour scrolling through my news feed or reddit or something and not getting yeah. anything really out of it or i can spend that time reading a book and if it's on that then i don't have the distraction so exactly yes okay well i'm glad you mentioned that kindle because i was i was looking at those last night and i just thought i think that's the only way i'm going to read is if I get a Kindle because purchasing a book or going to the library, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to get a physical book. Hmm. So I'll try that. And then also I would like to, obviously with COVID it's different, um, but hopefully we can, some normalcy will come. I would like to start to maybe get my kids involved in doing things. Um, I don't know what I haven't decided, but I just thought, you know, my kids, are very blessed and we have a lot of toys. And a lot of the times I'll say to my son, who's three, gonna be four in June, I'll be like, let's um, go through your toys and let's donate some to other kids. But like in his mind, he has no idea what that means. Like he doesn't know, I mean, he's too young, but he doesn't know like, I guess what being blessed is. So I would like to get them involved somehow in the community I don't know. It's just something I had in my mind. So I would like to do that, whether it's like um, my husband and I used to uh, kind of work with the Humane Society and mm -hmm. we fostered dogs and that was just an eye opener. And I feel like if my kids somehow can get involved in doing something, it'll better the community and it'll better their hearts. So that's kind of my goals. For oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. And, and that's something like as you if you make that the normal thing from a young age, that's, yeah. that's just going to be a part of who they are. They are just giving and charitable. And that's, that's a really cool thing to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do a, we do a similar thing with, I mean, Abram doesn't really understand it but with Aria. Um, every so often we'll just sit down in her room and say, okay, what toys do we want to give away to other kids so we can make room for new toys. And so we'll get rid of like, you know, five or six or, or whatever toys. Yeah. And then she can, she can get a new thing. Yeah. Um, but then Mindy takes that to the Goodwill or, or St. Vinny's or wherever and, yeah. and they get rid of them. I don't think she understands the concept of giving them away. Right. Um, but at least she's, you know, used to the whole, you know, get rid of the old and with the new and pass things along. Don't throw them in the garbage kind of deal. So <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a, that's a, it's a definitely a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, let's just, everyone, let's get those little goals, get something in mind. It doesn't have to be big, but how can we better ourselves? How can we better the community? How can we better one another? I think that's, you know, should be a goal for 2021 for everybody. So. Yeah, my, um, my, yeah, I said it's small achievable goals, um, incrementing small little bits. The other big thing is make it part of your routine, mm -hmm. right? It's got to be something that's easy to do you don't want to force yourself to do something drastic because then you're not, you're not going to look forward to doing it or it's going to be hard to do. If it's small, cheap, like, um, I don't know, work out for 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, anything counts. You could just drop and do, and I've been doing this for a while, but you can, or I, I was doing a hundred pushups a day for a while. So I would come down here, turn on my computer, do 20 pushups while it started. When I, every time I would go up to go to the bathroom or get more coffee and I came down, I'd do 20 more. And honestly, yeah. by noon, it was easy to do a hundred. And it was something that it didn't, I didn't have to set aside time to do it. 
Yeah. I just did it as I was doing other things and then it wasn't impactful and then it, I had no trouble doing it. So that was like totally. small achievable things you can work in and maybe, at, you know, eventually I'll get to the point where I actually want to spend proper time working out, but <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. Yeah, no, I completely get it. That's actually one thing in 2020 that went to the wayside for me. It was like, I didn't go to the gym. I didn't run. I didn't do all that fun stuff. And then when you have two kids, it's like nearly impossible. Yeah. And you're, you're drained at the end of the day anyway. So it's like, I don't want to work out. Yeah. No, I, so I work out. I work out by, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I work out by playing VR. So it's like, I get to tell myself I'm working out, but I'm actually playing games, but if I yeah. sweat, like it's, it's intense, but um, yeah. So make it work for you, I guess is my goal. And the other thing is um, these things have digital well-being on them. I know in the, in the, um, Android ecosystem, digital well-being, set timers on your apps, right? Yeah, I set, that's a good idea. I give myself 15 minutes a day to look at my Google News feed, and then after that, it shuts down until midnight. So if you I like that. realize you're spent, you don't have time to work out because you have you know an hour of Facebook time, set it to 30 minutes and use that 30 minutes elsewhere. Totally, yeah, yeah. You have to be dedicated, but those little changes can make a huge impact on your life, so. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. All right, so we're going to bring back product of the month, and um, I'll go first, Dakota. I want to share this with you guys, and I'm going to drop the link in the potty chat um, so you guys can try it out. I would love to hear if you actually did. Um, so this is a foot mask. And I want everyone to give it a try, okay? It's, it's been hard trying to um, go get pedicures. And if you're a man, maybe you never have. But this can be your um, gateway into having your own at-home pedicure. So it's a foot mask. What you do inside of it, there's some sort of aloe or whatever. You put them on your feet for about, let me see here. I think this one is like oh, 60 to 90 minutes. Okay, okay, so sit down with your Kindle, read, catch up on your Netflix, just put this on your foot, 60, 90 minutes. You take it off, um, you just kind of let it be, let it dry, because they're a little wet afterwards. And then you wait, wait about a week. And I kid you not, your entire foot will peel. All that stuff will peel off you guys, but it's amazing. It's so nice. Okay. Give it a try. This one I got at my local Walmart, but um, I'm also going to drop a link into an Amazon one that my, this one I think was less than five, six bucks. Is it a goo? Is it a goo you apply or is it a pad? What is it? It's actually, um, here, why don't I just do it? What? Don't wait. I'll open it. It's okay. It's okay. I can do it because I got to work after this, but this is what it looks like. That is something. It's like a little booty, okay? okay. And inside, you can smell. It's kind of minty, eucalyptus-y. Okay, yeah. Give it a whiff. Yep. And then you apply, um, put it on your feet 60, 90 minutes. Try not to walk around. You might slip. But then wait about a week and you'll get that real good peel. Your entire foot peel will come off. So give it a try. You guys just test it out. It's really cool. Um, I liked hearing from you guys the first time we shared products um, when I shared the mouthwash for those that also have duty breath. Still use that stuff. Yeah, it's totally. just a good mouthwash in general. I just, I've, I've stuck with it. So. Yeah, see? So it's nice. Just give it a try. You never know uh, what it could help. But that's my product of the month. All right. <laughs> uh, hey, you're like you contemplating know, trying it. And I just, trying. <laughs> I'm just thinking of a week later when I just have like this foot scale. Totally. That uh, just but, try you know, it. If it feels good, whatever. Well, I guess we'll find out. My yeah. product of the month is this. I don't know if I've shared that. Uh, that's I've had. This is probably like my fourth wearable fifth wearable i've had um so uh, i wanted to it's the amazon halo um but okay. uh What's that? i've i've had you know fitbits i've had like some generic um smart watches and stuff and i, I 
you could sign up or apply to get early access to the Halo at a discount. And um, so I, I'm checked it out. And basically, it's a um, it's like a, a fitness and wellness tracker. Um, the, the 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 device itself is is it tracks like uh, heart rate and things like that and movement and sleep patterns and you can actually enable um, voice to to check your tone throughout the day. I don't have that on because I really don't care about my tone um, at the moment. I'm really just talking to my family and I'm generally nice to them. Um, Interesting. But it's this and then the app itself has a bunch of features in there. And so what it does is you can it kind of like this is, it's a thematic for the resolution stuff. You can kind of set goals and things you want to achieve um, much like you can with other other Fitbit stuff. But this has a lot more um, than just like steps like it tracks um, sleep like last night. Oh, apparently, yeah, I'll that'd be nice. Off. Last night, apparently I had good sleep because this tells me I had good sleep there. Um, you can you check your activity for the week so like it, you want to hit like 150 points of moving around so it's not like you need to do this every day but like you know, over the course of a week you know if you have a bad day you have a good day um you can take body scans which will tell you your bmi using ai and cameras I've, I've tried it it's not as accurate as my scale or my scale isn't as accurate as this i'm not sure i just take the middle of the two yeah um and then uh it also has things like um you can set like meditation goals and things like that. And it'll remind you, it's like, Hey, you got to do your meditation for today. And it's a way to just kind of keep you on track really is what it is. And it's, I like it because it's, um, it's comfortable. It's not a screen. So I'm it not distracted fit. by it. Yeah. It's, it charges super fast. It lasts a long time. Um, and like I said, I'm not getting text messages and I interacting with it ever. I just keep it on. And then what I did is I got it and I just didn't change my habits. And now with the new year, I'm going to start looking at where I was and where I want to be and, and trying to work my way for the, you know, so I have a historical data now. So um, yeah, Amazon Halo, I think it's a hundred bucks, but I like early access thing got it for 60 bucks. So I figured I'd give it a whirl. Oh, cool. That's yeah. awesome. I like it. I don't have an Apple watch, so I've never been able to track or do anything, but I like the idea that it doesn't, like you said, have that technology on it because how many times have you talk, been talking to somebody that has an Apple Watch and they get a little buzz and they're like this and you're talking to them? Yeah, I don't need any more of that. I've already got my my phone. Yeah, so right? like I like I, now after work, um, Mindy and I, our rule is, or we've been trying to do is um, we put our phones on the railing above the, the basement stairs. So like, well, from the time work is done and supper starts till the time the kids go to bed, they just sit there yeah. so that we're just not distracted. Cause I mean, if it buzzes in your pocket, you just grab it. Right. And then I was like, I really want a smartwatch, but then like, I don't want that extra distraction. I don't need that. I'm not on any platforms and people don't need to get a hold of me that often. So um, yeah. yeah, this is a nice medium. So cool. cool. I like that a lot. Awesome. Well, there you guys go. Let us know if you purchase these or you test these out. We would love to hear some feedback. Um, and if also, if you have a product to share, send us a, what is that? A Teams message? A yes. DM? What do you Use call teams. it? Use Teams. Use Teams. Teams is yeah. great. Teams is great. So um, yeah. And when just, your foot peels off, send a picture to Tori. Um, I want to see a picture. Maybe not of your foot, just... <laughs> Send me a picture of like, you're just so the husk, happy. <laughs> just the husk that came off your foot. <laughs> Seriously, give it a try, you guys. It's awesome. Um, okay, cool. So I have, I also have a little snack to share too. Um, during quarantine, I've tried out a few fun snacks, but I thought maybe this would be fun to share with people. I'm not a huge dieter or like a, I don't know how to say it, like a bad person. Like I don't go off of things, but I feel, I don't know what keto is, but I feel like this is keto friendly. I don't know. You tell me if you know anything about keto. So, um, this, I made one beforehand mm. is the product I'm going to share with you guys. So my son loves peppers, bell peppers. Um, so what you do is you cut a pepper in half and then inside here, you line it with cream cheese. And then you grab this stuff called everything but the bagel seasoning. That stuff's great. Yeah. Um, sprinkle that on. And there you have like a little semi-healthy snack. Isn't that awesome? It is keto friendly. High fat. Sure. Good stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, my, we, my mom, or my, my Mindy, my wife. <laughs> my mom um, Mindy. Buys 
she buys those those little peppers and Ariel will just eat them right out of it. She loves vegetables, raw vegetables. She doesn't like them cooked, but yeah, she so I'm she'd love that. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Give it a try. It's something fun. Um, but this one, this one I got as a gift for my birthday from Trader Joe's, which we gotta get one of those around here. Is any, does anybody else like Trader Joe's? Like I've never been, but I know I think Mindy gets the everything bagel season. I don't know if she gets it through Thrive Market or Costco mm-hmm. or Woodman mm-hmm. somewhere, but she gets it and that stuff is delightful put yeah. it on some buttered toast i like putting on eggs everything eggs they're great yeah totally yeah. so just something fun i wanted to share. i didn't i didn't make some well i didn't two things first thing <laughs> i didn't make anything for this snack but i did want to share that in my trend with healthy alternative snacks i don't know if i've shared these before did i share these before Maybe no, I did. but Dakota, I love those. Yeah, I the veggie those. chips. We've gotten those. Sour cream and onion, I like the pizza ones. These are great. They're like yeah. Pringles. They're just, you know, slightly better. And then I did want to share a picture of something, a bit of a throwback here. Um, let's see if I can share my screen. Um, Ooh, we'll a charcuterie. Now, this is what we made for a Christmas gathering. Note the um, the little ramekin of the, the purplish substance towards the top there. With the... I got cellophane over the top yeah. of the spill. But that is the jalapeno blueberry jam from our uh, cook-off thing. And I kind no. of refined it a little bit, and it was phenomenal. Stop people, it! People loved it. So oh, I, I actually wrote MG. down a recipe for it when I made it, too, this time. Dude, look at what came from the potty chat. Amazing. Like a shareable charcuterie side dip. Yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. Yum. I love it. Oh my gosh. We got four minutes. Okay. So you yeah. know what? Why don't you just share your feel good story? Um, and then we'll be good. I'll send you this link as well. So you can maybe put it in the notes or something for the video. But my feel-good story, I actually heard about it a week or maybe a week or two ago. Um, and it was one of those things that just made me smile and want to tear up, but I don't cry because I'm a man. I was kidding. I do cry sometimes because it's good to cry. Um, oh. So there was the, uh, to kind of sum it up, there was this uh, UPS driver in this smaller community um, who's just a, a good part of the community obviously uh, you know in these times a lot of t- times like people will go weeks without seeing anybody except for their delivery driver who's bringing them stuff and those people out there working hard every day and um, mm-hmm. he was just a kind of a warm personality and everybody kind of knew him in the community and somebody had made a post basically saying they wanted to show some support or some support or appreciation for for him and uh, his name is anthony and um the video on the link's great um so basically, um, they, she got a lot more responses to that request than she was anticipating. And it turned, and then one day he was coming to do his his route and like both sides of the street were just lined up with like over a hundred people just holding up signs and cheering him on and showing appreciation for, uh-huh. for what he was doing. So that was my, my feel good story. Absolutely amazing. So there you have it, you guys. Happy January. Sorry, it's a little bit late, but um, we'll get right on to February 2021. Here we go. Let's give a little toast, Dakota. Good times to come. Here's hoping. Here's to hoping. Ah. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next month. See ya. <laughs>